All right, so we close out our discussion on trigonometric substitution with an example of um, finding the area of a circle. Um, you were probably taught this early on in your education that the area of a circle was what? Pi times the radius of the circle squared. Um, but you were just told that, I'm sure. I don't think you were originally proven that uh, fact. Um, and you might have seen a proof of the um, area of a circle in different settings. We're going to do it uh, in terms of calculus, in terms of an integral. And so I've drawn a circle here and let's center it at the origin. We have the x and y axes coming out here and we want the radius to be r, so the distance from the center of the circle, the origin, to a point on the circle that's going to be r we'll say. All right, r is some fixed number. Keep that in mind. That's not a variable. That's a constant. So for a circle of a fixed radius r, what is the area enclosed? And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to find the area of this uh, one quarter circle. In other words, I'm going to find this area here. and then I will simply multiply that area by four right, to get the area of the entire circle. Okay, So what is this area? First of all, what's this curve? This curve is the curve x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Right, That's the standard form for a circle. Uh, in this case, radius r centered at the origin. And I can solve for y, right? If I subtract x squared from both sides and take the square root, I get y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. And so that's this top part. Notice I took the positive root. When I took the square root, if I did the negative root, I would have the, 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 the bottom half of the circle. So I've got the top half of the circle uh, going from what? I want to integrate from from 0 to, to what? What's this value here? That's r, right? Because the radius of the circle is, is r. So I'm going from 0 to r, and that's what I want to do. So the area uh, of my circle is 4 times, right? Because I need to find this area multiplied by 4. The integral from 0 to r of the function, right? This curve given by the square root of r squared minus x squared. Um, integrating with respect to x. Remember, x is the variable, r is a constant. x is the variable, r is a constant. So notice what we have. We have a form r squared minus x squared, r being a constant. Well, which trig substitution are we going to use here? Which one are we going to use? Notice it's a squared minus x squared here. Here it's r squared minus x squared. So we're going to use x equal what r sine theta in this case. So x is r sine theta. And of course, dx is, what's the derivative of cos uh, sine theta? Cosine theta. Okay. And um, similarly, we can show that the square root of r squared minus x squared is again r squared minus x squared is r squared sine squared theta. Factor out the r squared from both of those. Square root of r squared is r. Pull it out of the square root and I'm just left with 1 minus sine squared theta. Of course 1 minus sine squared theta again is cosine squared theta. And so this is r cosine theta. Okay. And um, what I want to look at is, first of all, I want to look at this integral without the limits. I want to look at the indefinite integral. And then, I'll, and then we'll get the antiderivative and we'll, we'll come back. So in other words, look at the indefinite integral um, from, uh, let's just look at the, uh, the antiderivative r squared minus x squared. Just look at that. Uh, 
Um, So that's that's that integral form. What what do we get there? Uh, of course, that's r cosine theta for the square root of r squared minus x squared, and dx is r cosine theta d theta. Now remember, r is a constant. R times r is r squared. We can pull that out, and I'm just left with cosine squared theta d theta which we've dealt with this integral two previous times already. And so, you know, you might want to look back at that in the previous videos we did this. Uh, you can get it from the table of integrals. And of course, when we were doing trig integrals, you actually hopefully derived this just like I derived the integral of sine squared theta. And so that's going to be one half theta plus one half sine theta cosine theta plus c. Now, what is theta, sine theta, and cosine theta? Well, we, we know from up here that um, x is r sine theta, so therefore sine theta is x divided by r. And actually, we've got cos, and so, well, in particular, theta is the inverse sine of x over r. And we also know cosine theta. I mean, I could draw my right triangle from this and get cosine theta, but I see it here. All right, this is equal to r cosine theta, so if I divide this by r, I'll get cosine theta. So cosine theta is uh, square root of r squared minus x squared, all divided by r. Okay, so with this information, we get that this is r squared, one half sine inverse x over r, plus one half sine theta is x over r, cosine theta. is that plus c. Don't forget the r squared is multiplying everything through here. Okay. Okay. And so um, I can, of course, clean this up a little bit. Um, I can, I guess I could distribute through through r squared if I wanted to here. Let's just clean this up. I get one half r squared inverse sine x over r. And notice what happens here. I've got 1 half x times this stuff. And what r times r, r squared in the bottom, right, in the denominator. r squared times r squared cancels out. I'm just left with 1 half x square root of x. So, sorry, square root of r squared minus x squared plus c. So distributing the r squared r squared through. I get this. Okay, so I do all this to get my antiderivative. Remember, r is a constant. X is the variable. So, so going back to our problem, so the area, I'm just going to copy this integral down, was four times, right, because all we, we were doing from zero to r was finding the area of one quarter of a circle. Okay. Well, what's the antiderivative of the square root of r squared minus, minus x squared? It's, it's right here. So I've got this 4, and, and well, we can distribute that 4 through as well, which will clean up all those 1 halves, won't it? There's the antiderivative. I don't need to do the plus C when I'm doing a definite integral, right? I'll just evaluate this from uh, upper limit of R. Remember, this is this is X. This is X equal R. And this is X equal zero. X is the variable. R is a constant. Okay, very important there. Okay, I can also distribute this four through. Four times a half is two each time. 
So I'm going to get 4 times half is 2. In fact, um, well, 2 um, r squared sine inverse. Um, well, let me just let me just do this first before I evaluate it. Four times a half is two x square root of r squared minus x squared. I don't know why I just did that, but I did. Okay, so this is x equals zero, x equal r. So let's evaluate this at, at x equal r, at evaluate x equals zero and subtract, right? That's what we do. So at x equal r, what happens? 2r squared sine inverse r over r, x is r, r over r is 1, right? Sine inverse of 1. I want you to think about what is the inverse sine of 1. Plus, uh, if x is r, what happens here? I get r here, but I get r squared minus what? x is r, r squared minus r squared. What's r squared minus r squared? That's 0. This whole thing is 0 plus 0. So that's the evaluation when x is equal to r. Minus the evaluation when x is equal to 0. Well, if it's 0, I get 2 r squared inverse sine 0 divided by r inverse sine of 0. And what is inverse sine of 0? Think about that. Plus what? If I plug in x equals 0, x is 0, I get r squared minus 0. I get r here, but 0 times anything is 0. So, so plus 0 there. Okay. Well, inverse sine of 0, what is that? Inverse sine of 0 is 0, since sine of 0 is 0, the inverse sine of 0 is 0. But what is sine inverse of 1? Sine of what gives you 1? And remember this this uh, input, the uh, x over r in this case, uh, um, is, sorry, not the x over r, but the theta, right, in this has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Remember that? And what is the value there? It's pi over 2, right? Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so sine inverse of 1 is pi over 2. If you were wondering, you remember the area of a circle has a pi in it. <laughs> There's where our pi comes from, right there. <laughs> right? Okay, so th this is 0, this is 0, everything else is 0. All that matters is right here. All that matters is right here. Okay, and what do I get? 2 r squared times pi over 2. 2 times 1 half is 1. I'm just left with r squared times pi, or that we normally write as what? r squared times pi? Pi r squared. <laughs> there it is. There's the area of the circle. Okay. You probably just want us <clears throat> to tell you that, but at least now you have seen the derivation of the area of a circle and a nice little application of the trig substitution technique. Okay, we'll stop here. You probably had enough with trig substitution, but you're going to have to practice a lot of these because as you've seen, these are kind of long and drawn out, but they're kind of fun. They're little problems to solve. They've got a lot going on, but um, definitely you want to spend some time practicing these uh, trig substitution problems.